Section 6-6 .6 is about trapezoids and kites. And by the end of this section, you should know three properties of trapezoids. Two about isosceles trapezoids and one about any kind of trapezoid. And also that you know three properties of kites. That you can find the measures of missing angles in trapezoids and kites. And that you can use theorem 6-21 to write and then solve equations with trapezoid mid-segments. This first video I'll talk about trapezoids. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one set of parallel lines. Okay, and I've drawn in three trapezoids down here. Now the wording of exactly one is important because we don't consider parallelograms as a type of trapezoid because they have very different properties. Okay, we think about trapezoids and parallelograms as two very separate, very different um, quadrilaterals. Okay, and so we, we define a trapezoid with having exactly one set of parallel lines. Now, with uh, some of the parts that make up a trapezoid, um, the two parallel sides we call bases. Okay, and with each base, you can think of the two angles next to that base as base angles. So, the bottom base... These are its base angles. And the top base, these are its base angles. So we'll talk about base angles in terms of which base we're talking about. And the other two sides are called legs. Now, with the properties of trapezoids, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. So it has four sides. And the sum of the interior angles is 360 degrees. And the sum of the exterior angles is 360 degrees. Okay. Let me also point out that a trapezoid isn't a parallelogram or a rhombus or a rectangle or a square. Okay? So it doesn't have any of the properties that we've discussed in the past in the last few sections. Okay? But there is something that we have discussed before that does apply to trapezoids, and that is that the same side interior angles are supplementary. We talked about this when we talked about um, parallelograms. But the two angles that form same side interior angles will be supplementary. So in this picture, these two angles form same side interior angles. And you can see that if you draw out um, these lines, these parallel lines, and think of AD as a transversal, then those form same side interior angles. Okay? And the same is true about angle B and angle C for the exact same reason. Okay, so the angles that form same side interior angles will be supplementary. Okay, now changing gears a little bit, we'll talk about isosceles trapezoids. And an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid where the non-parallel sides are congruent. Okay, now the word isosceles also is the same isosceles as an isosceles triangle, where two of the sides are the same length. Okay. And isosceles trapezoids are very similar to isosceles triangles, just with a top cut off. Or it's a trapezoid now instead of a triangle. Okay, there are two properties about isosceles trapezoids that I want you to know. <clears throat> okay, this is an isosceles trapezoid. So these sides are always parallel. And these sides are always congruent. Okay. Now I'm going to draw in the, I'm going to measure the angles A, B, C, and D. Okay. Now this may not be surprising to you, but these two are congruent, and so are these two. Okay. So let me draw where those are. Um, this angle C. Angle BAC is here, and angle ABD is here. Okay, so the top two angles are congruent, and the bottom two angles are congruent. Okay, and that'll happen on isosceles trapezoids. So what the theorem says is if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. Okay, each pair of base angles is congruent. Now, um, I mentioned before that isosceles trapezoids are very similar to isosceles triangles. Okay, and this theorem reminds me a lot of the isosceles triangle theorem, 
talking about base angles being congruent. Okay, so I think of it as um, you ha I have an isosceles triangle. Okay, and then I'll think about this side being parallel to the base. Okay, so if I um, in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. So if I um, cut the isosceles triangle, where this is parallel to this, and think about only this um, shape down here, this trapezoid down here, this isosceles trapezoid, the base angles will still be congruent. No matter where I cut this um, isosceles triangle, the base angles will stay congruent. Okay, And that's you know one way of remembering the fact that the base angles are congruent on an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, let's use that theorem to um, find out the measures of some angles. Okay, so in, I'm going to call this 1 and call this 2. Okay, now, um, the base angles are congruent. So angle 1 is also 77. And uh, to find angle 3, we have to use the fact that um, these angles form same side interior angles. So they're supplementary. So to find 3, I'll take 180 and subtract 77, and I get 103. Okay, So angle 3 is equal to 103 degrees. And for the same reason, angle 2 is also 103. Or you can think of it as the base angles are congruent, and so 3 and 2 um, have the same measure. Okay, The same thing is true about number 2. Number 3 is 65 degrees, because base angles are congruent. And to find angle 1, it's supplementary with 65 because these form same side interior angles. So 180 minus 65 is equal to 115. Okay, So angle 1 and angle 2 are both 115 degrees. OK, the other property about isosceles trapezoids. I'm going to draw on the diagonals and measure them. Okay. Let me move this actually. Okay. Now you'll notice that the that the diagonals will always be the same measure. Okay, and that's the next property about trapezoids is that if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then its diagonals are congruent. Okay, And again, just like a lot of these properties, we could prove this using um, you know, triangle congruence theorems, uh, but we won't. Okay, Let me just again remind you that the base angles being congruent and the diagonals being congruent um, is true only for isosceles trapezoids. These properties will not necessarily work for any trapezoid, just isosceles trapezoids. OK, theorem 6-21 um, is about trapezoid mid-segments. <clears throat> so if you draw in um, a mid-segment, meaning um, to the midpoints of two opposite sides, okay, the theorem says that the mid-segment is parallel to the bases. So this will be parallel to these sides. And the length of the mid-segment is half of the sum of the lengths of the bases. Okay, So it's similar to a mid-segment of a triangle, where it's half of the, you know, the parallel side. But now it's a trapezoid, and so it's half of the sum of the bases. Okay, I think of it as it being the average of the bases. Okay, So if I add them together and divide by 2, I get the average, and that's the length of the mid-segment. Okay, now let's use this in a problem uh, to see how it works. So EF is a mid-segment of trapezoid ABCD. The question is, what is X? Well, the mid-segment EF is equal to half of the sum of the bases. Okay, so the mid-segment is equal to half of 8 plus 2x minus 4. Okay, Hopefully you can see where all those pieces came from. So the mid-segment is half of the sum of the bases, and I'll solve this. So I'll first simplify inside the parentheses first, following my order of operations, and I get 2x plus 4. 
Okay, and then I'll distribute the one half. So one half times two x is x. One half times four is two. Sorry about that. Let me try a different question. The the last one I was just doing um, has infinitely many solutions, which um, is something that we won't really talk a lot about um, in homework and things. So let me try one that's more like what you'll see on homework and tests and quizzes and things. So um, the mid segment is equal to half the sum of the bases. So x plus 3 plus this one plus 12, this one. Okay, I will combine like terms in the parentheses, x plus 15, and then I'll distribute the 1 half, okay, um, and I get half x plus half of 15 is 7.5, okay, so I'll subtract half of an x from both sides. Now, 3 minus a half is equal to 2.5 is equal to 7.5, divide both sides by 2.5, and x is equal to 3. Okay, um, and that's the answer to the question. I can plug it back in just to show you that 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, and 12. So if I add 6 and 12 together, I get 18, and that's, um, and 9 is half of 18. So that wraps up our discussion about trapezoids. In the next video, I'll talk about kites.